This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. All right, this is the second lecture on um, life cycle costing. In the first lecture, we have the discussion side of it. I explained the phases um, in the life cycle of a product. Um, let me now use example one to show you how you can be asked to arithmetic on it uh, and to make sense of exactly what we mean by the life cycle cost. Um, example one, the last page of um, this chapter. Have a read with me. A company is planning a new product. Market research suggests that demand for the product would last for five years and at a selling price of $10.50 a unit. We expect we'll sell 2,000 units in the first year and 12,000 units in each of the other four, so five years in total. We want to achieve a markup of 50% of cost, and it's estimated that the lifetime costs of the product, so that all the costs that are going to be involved in this product, they're estimated that the manufacturing costs will be $6 a unit, the design and development is 60,000, and the end of life costs 30,000. End of life. It could be all sorts of things. It could be um, you know, the cost of dismantling the um, machines that we're using. Um, don't worry, in the exam that's not a problem. It can be perfectly clear what costs will be involved. But there are all the costs that we've estimated that will occur. We're required to calculate. Now, although this lecture is on life cycle costing, uh, quite neatly here, but it could be combined with target costing, and we did that in the last chapter, so a little bit of revision. First of all, we're going to calculate the target cost, what minimum cost, or maximum cost, rather, we can afford to achieve what we want. And then life cycle costing proper, we're going to work out what we call the life cycle cost per unit. So let's first of all look at the target cost. Uh, remember the steps from the previous chapter. Determine a realistic selling price. So we've decided it'll be $10.50 a unit. Decide what our target is. It says we want to achieve a markup of 50% of cost. And I did say when we went through target costing, be very careful, read it properly. If they'd say 50% of selling price, we can write the profit straight down. Because it's 50% of cost, it means for every 100 cost, the profit is going to be 50. The selling price will be 150. Or if you think about it the other way around, for every 150 selling price, the cost would have to be 100. So the target cost 100 for every 150 of the selling price of $10.50, which is, I should be able to put it in my head, but it's still 100, 150, 1050, it's $7. Now, again, that in uh, by itself has absolutely nothing to do with life cycle costing, pure target costing, but it does mean for this product to be worthwhile producing. Uh, we'd have to make sure that the, um, the cost of doing it was $7 or less. Now, OK, it does say the manufacturing costs $6, no problem. But you know, if, we, if we're going to make a profit overall, we need to take account of all the costs involved, whatever they are, design, development, end of line, anything. But we want to look at all the costs over the entire life. And so for part B, let's work out the life cycle cost per unit. And first of all, let's see what the total costs over the life are going to be. Over the entire five year period, we're going to have to spend design and development of how much is it? 60,000. In addition, there are these end of life costs. Of 30,000. And of course, 
does the manufacturing costs. Six dollars a unit and how many units are we expecting we'll have to produce? It's 2,000 in the first year. It's then 12,000 in each of the remaining four. Which is what? 48, it's 50,000 units we expect to have to produce. And where is it? Ah, the manufacturing costs are six dollars a unit. So a total of 300,000. So here are estimates of how much in total we'll have to spend. A total of 390,000. Now in the exam, they're unlikely to um, give you that many costs, uh, too many costs rather, but there could be any number. But essentially whatever costs are involved, you know, maybe that's 60,000. Instead of it being design and development, that was the cost of a new machine that was needed. Fine. We bring in all the costs that we expect over the entire life. So there's the total lifetime cost. Um, we need to know our lifetime cost per unit. And so what's the total we expect to produce? I worked out a minute ago, over the whole period it's 50,000. And therefore, the lifetime cost per unit Three hundred and ninety thousand in two. Oh dear. Three hundred and ninety over fifty thousand units comes to uh, seven dollar eighty. Oops. And so that's like the average uh, over its whole life. We expect it to cost 780 a unit. And forgetting part A for just one second, if we were going to make a profit overall, we'd want to charge more than 780 if we could. Uh, even though we acknowledge, if you think back to the previous lecture, we acknowledge that initially we'll be losing money. But because later we'll be earning money, that's the price we the price will need to be fixed at hand with 780. Uh, here, of course, we know at the selling price, 1050, found it is profitable, but it's not achieving our target for profit because the target cost was $7. And so although um, it would be profitable as things stand, it won't give us um, the required level of profits. Uh, and so it says, is it worth making? You know, we may decide we'll accept a lower profit, but basically there is a cost gap. And if we determine to make that profit for 50% on cost, We'll either have to find ways of reducing the cost, closing the cost gap, uh, or um, we'll just not go ahead if it won't achieve the profit and we're not prepared to um, relax it. Oh, I've added a little bit on here to give you a challenge. We've done the life cycle cost, that, that's, that's it. Add up total cost divided by total units, finished. However, it has been further estimated that if we were to spend an additional 20,000 on design, then the manufacturing cost per unit could be reduced. So you've seen what's currently happening. We're currently spending 60,000 on design and the manufacturing cost is $6 a unit. If we're prepared to spend another 20,000 on design, then the manufacturing cost per unit is 
could be reduced. Perhaps we can get that cost down to five dollars a unit or something. It says if the additional amount on design was to be spent, so if we did spend the extra 20, what's the maximum manufacturing cost per unit that could be allowed if we to achieve our required markup? Now, what might be a good idea, actually, is to pause this lecture and have a go yourself and then unpause the lecture, resume it and uh, check your answer. Maybe you did pause and resume. I hope you did. I mean, have a go. Don't just watch me. But I will carry on and do an answer. Uh, I will say there are several ways you could go about arriving uh, at the answer. I'll do it a way which... I hope makes sense and is understandable. Um, if you've done it a different way and got the same answer, then absolutely fine. Doesn't matter how you do it, as long as obviously you get the right answer. If you do it a different way and got the wrong answer and don't understand why, well, have a think. Watch what I do if you need to ask in the Institute. Uh, what I'll do is this. I don't know, you may find your way faster, slower, I don't know. Uh, but I'll say, if we're going to achieve our required marker, what do the total costs have to be? Well, to achieve the required um, markup, the target costs have to be $7 a unit. And remember, we're producing 50,000 units. And so we need the total cost to be 350,000. And what will the cost be? Well, design and development. Um, at the moment, we estimated 60, but it says here we'll be spending an extra 20. So there'll be 80,000 spent on design and development. End of life costs, there's no mention of them changing. So presumably still 30, so 110 so far. And so the amount we could afford to spend on manufacturing must be the balance. Which is what, to get a total of 350, it must be 240,000. So to achieve our target, the manufacturing costs will have to reduce to uh, 240 in total. Um, it wants to know the cost per unit that could be allowed. Well, the cost per unit, if a, a total of 240, it was 50,000 units that we're producing, and therefore 480 a unit. So if we can then. Um, if this extra design cost of 20,000, if as a result we can get manufacturing costs down to 480, then um, the product would end up being worth doing and it would obviously be uh, worth spending that extra 20,000. So I hope that's clear. And again, as I did say, if you did have a go yourself and you got the same answer doing it a different way, fine. There are several ways you can go about it. Uh, it. That doesn't matter. What does matter, obviously, is you understand what's happening and uh, you end up with the right answer. Uh, that's it for life cycle. Uh, but as always, um, do go and find the practice test and have a go at the, um, the five MCQs on this.